<laughs> oh, it's it's just like that. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Conversations with Joshua T. Berglund, and I got my man, my man, Paul Carpenter here. This is like round eight, and I don't even know if I have all the other recordings now. I have to look for them. It's been, <laughs> it's been a it's been a journey, you and I. I tell you. And and and, and <laughs> normally I kind of like to do a professional introduction, but it just doesn't feel right with Paul. Not that he's not a professional, not that he's not an expert, but this has been it's almost like interview with the vampire, but a little bit less controlled. And it's been fun. I'm not calling Paul a vampire. If anything, I'm the vampire in this equation, even though I'm not really a vampire. Uh <laughs> it's a good it's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. I'll take it. it. Yeah, it, it but this has been wild and we've covered so much ground that there's a map. I mean, I hold on. And I haven't even I have um, all these pages of notes from all of our broadcasts of all that we've covered. And how we all started this, just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, is a conversation about James Heydrich. That is how we met. And so I want to oh, talk and have, to you. And have I, I got oh. huge news for you, Joshua? Well, I got news for you too, but I'll let you share yours since you're the guest. By the way, welcome, my friend. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Joshua, for having me back, for letting me be part of your life in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's weird, but we haven't talked uh, in a while, and it's 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 occurred to me as we you were talking and as we spoke just briefly the other day, I was like man i miss him <laughs> you're one of the few people that say that other than jessica i can't even get <laughs> my kids to say they miss me but they i know they love me because yeah, they tolerate sure. me. but no i've missed you too man because it feels like you know I've, i live my life feeling like i'm alone other than the people close you know my my jessica and the kids and and my mom and who I love, I, but I mean, as far as like my day-to-day -day operations, it feels very isolating and alone. And the way that I look at the world, the way that I see the world, the, the experiences that I've had, it, it's put me like on an island. And, and there's not many people that come to that island and feel like they want to stay or, <laughs> or even will come to it a lot at all. And so right. it's very rare that I meet somebody, um, Tony Dark, um, Dark Tony, he's known as, is another guy that I've, I've, we've become friends and we just kind of operate in this other ecosystem. He's kind of, you know, I, he, I come on his island, he comes on mine, then I've got you, who is who's also such a, a, someone I care about, I love, I appreciate, I love the way you think, you blow you. my mind all the time, and it's, but that's it, man. And it's, but what I love about this internet and the technology that we have is that misfits, outcasts, degenerates, people that are beat to march to the beat of their own drum, all what any of those analogies that you want to use, I think they're analogies. It, 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 it's so nice because we can find each other and it's tough and, and it sucks feeling alone. It's really, really tough. And the only way to survive feeling alone is to have a purpose and something that you genuinely, sincerely care about so much. That's what keeps you going. That's what keeps us from putting a bullet in our head is that we yeah. believe in what we're doing. If we didn't, I don't know how we would survive. Maybe I would be yeah. living the life of a drug addict like I was for 20 years. I don't know, or I'd be dead. But I'm grateful for you, Paul. And uh, I'm really, really glad that you're here, man. Thank so tell me for you too. So I have a couple pieces of good news. Um, one of them is that because of you, I met James Heydrich, right? One of the reasons that, you know, I connected with you and Bo Keeley, and I was also a able to hang out with uh, Frank Dukes. You met Frank? So Talked to him on the phone for hours. Very nice. Um, he was a nice guy. So he really is. And so uh, James has just put out a new website and it's called whistleblowers, Koalinga whistleblowers.blogspot.com. And it is uh, a new website that he's put out that is expressing all of the things that are happening within the jail that he's in. 
uh, call it mental institution that he's in. And how uh, recently uh, four more people have died. So he's been asking me for a while to find a way to do a video with him. And man, I was able to do this StreamYard thing. And so I said to him, dude, I think I can do StreamYard and I think I can StreamYard you live from your thing. I'll post that up. And then do you think we could get uh, Frank Dukes to come on? He's like, yeah. And I was like, hmm. do, you, do you think we could get Bo Keeley? He's like, I don't know about Bo Keeley, but <laughs> Bo, Bo's not going to show up. <laughs> but but he goes, I, I'm sure Frank would do the show with me. And I'm like, yeah, if we could do that, that'd be the first time they've seen each other in 30 years on camera. Whoa. I, yeah, I always forget about that. Like when I've talked to James' brother and, uh, and 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 Jen, like when I talk to them, you know, they talk like they just saw him today, but it's been thirty years. Yeah, Ooh. it's weird. It's really weird, right? So, and uh, so on Friday at twelve o'clock in the afternoon on my podcast. And by the way, I'm already now on episode fifty. I just finished episode fifty-one already. We're talking, what are we talking? We're talking less than two months. God, you're about. cranking them out. Huh. And they're all, it, bro, it was great. I had this girl on today. Her name is Rachel. And before we got on today, she's so cute. She says to me, man, you know, I don't think I can give you more than an hour, Paul. I'm very busy and I've got a lot of stuff to do and this and the other. By the time we're done, it's two and a half hours in. And she's like, bro, I could sit here and talk to you forever, man. Like, you are just just this juggernaut. And I'm like, let's go. Like, let's go. You know, I'm just totally into it. <laughs> uh, and I've gotten into this, this thing where I can, like, the whole idea of long form conversation mm. for me is just so easy already mm. that doing this uh like over and over again during the day like i have two of these i'm shooting tomorrow mm. so i'm like i'm 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 doing some where i'm even i'm pre-recording now so that i have like stuff that i could put out later and and the stuff that i don't pre-record i just put it out there and who cares you know it's out there um but yeah, man, episode 51 already. Very proud of that. I'll be on uh, 52 as of tomorrow or the next day. But wanted to share something that was in line with the other uh, bits of information that you and I had shared over time. We had gone over the whole eugenics and back and forth of the my America and back and forth. And so then watching this documentary recently, I find out that the Prussians... The Prussian Empire created the standardized school system. And they did this because they wanted to have a uh, a uh, patriotic uh, uh, fellowship of people who would listen to them and do whatever they told them to do. Wait, did you send this to me, or I just ironically watch it too? Oh man. And so it, let me I watch this about Prussia. This is where our whole education. I think I did send it to correct? you. I might, I don't know if I did or I didn't, but I, I, I went to chat GPT and I was like, okay, so do the connection for me here, chat GPT PP. And mm -hmm. it says, and I said, unraveling the connection between the Prussian education and the Nazi and American ideologies highlights education's remarkable influence rooted in visionary concepts of Joan, Johann Gottlieb Fitch, J.D. Rockefeller, and Horace Mann. The Prussian model championed compulsory education, standardized curricula, and state guidance. And then it goes further than that. Uh, this documentary that I saw in particular shows how we grabbed people from the United States, sent them to Germany, learned their techniques, came back to the United States, and all of this was being paid for by Rockefeller. And why? Mm -hmm. Because Rockefeller wanted to have employees that would do whatever he told them to do without thinking. Yep, and that's the world we live in today. 
and they covered everything man they covered religion so good education they needed workers and they couldn't yep. yet and and this idea came about right because they needed to find a way to be able to get a hold of the 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 control of the financial world and they thought education was the way is that correct mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's right. I believe what I understood it to be, and I could be wrong, and maybe no, I remember. If it, I could be wrong. <laughs> I, I, I thought that Prussia had been destroyed by Russia mm. or by somebody within the area. And because they were back down to like zero or if you're not nothing, that's when they created this system as a way of creating uh, people underneath that would listen to everything they said so that they could then go again and then win. And in the end, I believe they did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, I watched that two weeks ago and then I watched yeah. another version. But most of the, when they talk about the Rockefeller and the education system, most of these documentaries on YouTube don't get into Prussia. And that right. part, of, and that part to me seems to be the most significant, yet I don't know, why, why do you think they don't talk about that part as much? Well, I mean, I think it's very easy, right? So it's very like very much the idea that um, they don't want us to know. I think we talked about this before, the poisoned apple concept where, hey, if I tell you it's a poisoned apple and you still take it, it's on you, not me. Hey, look, we know the education system is crap in America, but you're still forced to go to it. And if you don't want to, then move to a state where you're not forced. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Dude, what I love right now, so I, I just got out of a meeting. I got to do a presentation uh, on media to a group of business leaders from around the world, like Africa, Europe, so good. Greece. Uh, awesome, like kingdom-minded businesses. Got to do this presentation. And there's a lot of things that I can't share about that meeting, like what was said and what was done. But I will say this. For all the people that talk about the fourth industrial revolution and man merging with machine and all that other stuff and they go oh, the end of the world the mark of the beast and all that other stuff i want to make this very and oh and the downfall of america first of all i'm not a trump fan i want to make that part clear however however i believe with all of my heart that we have every reason every reason to believe that everything is going to work out for the best and sure. now of all times in history is the time for people to pursue their dreams because this money excuse this i need money to live i need money to do this i need money i need money i need money, I need money. I, all that bull crap it's going to disappear oh, throw it away <laughs> because if you're not like some people took advantage of here was the opportunity this is my opinion you can say i'm crazy but i'm prepared sure. most people aren't covid when that hit yep. when they shut everything down that was a test yep who was going to sit on their fat ass and do nothing and just yep. take the government money whenever it showed up who yep. was going to take their unemployment who was going to take this who was going to do that and then who was going to recognize the opportunity that was in front of everyone's face. That and nobody no else took, bro, like if you look at the math of it, right? What was it? 60, uh, the people who were already wealthy became 60% wealthier during COVID. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask yourself, what the hell, how? Well, because they were the ones who went out. Like, I have a friend of mine. This is this guy. This guy was a genius. You know, let me finish uh, I mean, my point, though. So sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, please forgive okay. me. All right. No, that's okay. Um. So, but we have this opportunity that's right in front of us. But here's the thing. This is the trick. The money-focused people are missing the opportunity, and that's the problem. And I. And, 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 and look, and that is a whole long presentation that may be way above my expertise and my knowledge. However, I do know that there was an opportunity. So in this meeting, uh, one of the things that was said, and, and it was so encouraging to me, is that 
all of the people that are creators or they're step forward to start creating you have a place in the new world now yep. i believe that media is the foundation that you build this on and and media is free now you don't need to pay for things right. there's free access now to use all of the tools that cnn and everyone else is doing like every one of us can do it with no money everyone everyone and if not no money, money pretty better. pretty close to no money i mean you know I, dude no i built my no 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 hold on i disagree i built my first media structure i did it for free i took advantage of free tools now oh, look, sure i'm saying i'm saying you're I'm just saying and, now now you're probably oh, spending you know whatever who, money on 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 distributing it on let's say podbean or this or the other whatever you might be using you could do that but i for me and i do spend a little bit of money like what my overhead is on my expense for my platform is very very minimal but I self-host, so the most expensive thing is storage, and that's starting to change, and that's starting to become cheaper. Anyway, the point is this. I want to say this to everyone that's listening. Don't, if money enters your mind, you're thinking wrong. And I understand how crazy that sounds, but the world is going to be flipped upside down soon. Maybe literally, I don't know. But everything's going to be flipped upside down. So if you are doing things for money now, that thing you're doing for money now is not going to be there for you. So now is the time for you to create the world that you want to live in, because that's the world that we're going into, is a world for creators. And now is the time to create. And guess what? Guess what? Every single one of you are a creator. Everyone. Yeah. Now is the time yeah. to go for your dream. 100%. So that is Moose, that was one of the most powerful things. And I was in this meeting with multi-millionaires all around. And I'm telling you, now is the time to go for your dreams. It's a beautiful world that we're going into. All right, my man, go ahead. No, man, uh, do you have a way of sharing a video or sharing something on the screen while we're on together or no? What do you want to show me? So if, if you go to my Facebook page, I don't have Facebook. I wanna, oh, you can't, oh, okay, forget it. Uh, and I can't share <laughs> on your screen here, can I? Yeah, the, the little button. Let me um, see if it'll let me. Yeah, arrow going let me, up. Let me turn off my camera so I don't mess up everything and it looks all crazy here. Let me give me so one second. Uh, let me see if I, I can. I love that it. picture, by the way. Thank you, friend. <laughs> so, um, oh, it's oh, letting me. Is it, are you seeing what I'm seeing now? Yeah. You can see my screen? Yeah. Oh, how beautiful. So I wanted to share with you, I made a, ch a chat GPT recently just came out with a new bot creator in which you can create your own bot. And so what I did was I made a bot on chat GPT that's called the chat GPT Cinebot and it makes movies. So what I did and I'll just click on it so you can just see this part of it. But this will allow me to with with my uh, with w when you have chat GPT, which I do. And I don't know why it's not just going straight to it. Here, let's go to should go straight to it. So here's the chat GPT uh, bot that I've created. And it's once again, it's called the chat GPT sin bot. And you can ask it to make scripts, storyboards, movies, ideas, anything, even let's say uh, day of filming and I need the day of filming um, uh, uh, call sheet. It can do that for me as well. So anything to do with movies. So I went in here and I was talking to it and I asked it to make me a movie. I think I talked to you about this before a movie that was going to be about uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, who were going to be vampires. Yeah. In a, in a, right? Remember that whole thing I came up with? Yeah. So here you go. <laughs> I already love it. Well, that's kind of what she looks like right now, too. Holy crap. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, it's it, it's another world, man. So I just got the new chat GPT and I have yeah. not played with it to do this anything like this yet. I cannot right. wait. 
Well, let me tell you, I, I went a little crazy as I do with everything that I do in my life. Right. So I did a ton of research on how to do this. So one portion of it is I'm using, uh, the new Dolly and I'm using that out of chat GPT. It's just as good as mid journey. It's just as good as mid journey. hundred percent. And it can do text in your images. So if you write that you want a certain word in the image in a certain location, it will do that for you. So then I'm using Runway uh, ML, and it has the ability to take an image and turn it into a video. So the picture that one of the ones that really tripped me out was the scene where the people are shaking hands and the arms come apart and they're sitting down like that. That was just an image of a girl and a man sitting apart from each other. No arm crossed. So it created the arm across. It cre- yeah. Until like, yeah. And then the one, with, and then the one where you saw the robots and all the lasers are moving and all these things are moving around yeah. separate little pieces were moving. That's all runway. So then I then grabbed a video or just an image of Brad Pitt, which was the vampire. And then I went to uh, it's called Eleven Labs. And I've paid a little bit of money because recently I was hired by a political firm to re, uh, redo Lindsey Graham's voice uh, for a uh, phone call system because Lindsey Graham couldn't go into the studio. So my friend calls me and goes, can you do it? And I was like, fuck yeah, I can. Give me the, you know, send it to me and I'll show you what I can do. And I sent it to him and he was like, wait, did you really just make this in less than an hour? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, bro, you have no idea what you've just done for me. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so then I went and I found an interview with Brad Pitt where it's just Brad Pitt talking. So I copied that and I made that into an audio file. And I did the same thing with Angelina where Angelina is just giving it uh, responses. I copied that and made an audio file of that. And then I went to 11 labs and, t- and then, oh, I went to ChatGPT, my bot. And I said, here's my idea for the film. Now write me the scenes of the film. And it wrote all the scenes out. And then I said, now I need photos. So all the pictures that you saw were all the Dolly photos that were created from the ChatGPT bot. And then I said, now I want to make a trailer for the movie and I need the, it to be a voiceover with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt as the voiceover pieces. Tell me what pictures to use from the ones that you've just created and the order that I should put it in and give me lines for each one. So each picture that I had, I grabbed the line, I put it in 11 labs, grab, grab the voice and then went to Canva and with the ML movement videos of the picture, I put that in. I put the voice on top, did the same thing. And then the, the most complicated was Google has a new app in which if you upload a wave file and then upload a picture file or a movie file, so that's the movement of him just moving back and forth. If you do that, it will match the, the, the lips to the video. Wait, which Google uh, Google app? I'm going to have to find. I, I'm on their list. I have a bunch of, I have access to some cool Google stuff, but I'm curious which one you're talking about. Oh, and then the other one I want to tell you about, but I don't know if I should say it on camera. Man, screw it, I don't care. Uh, mm-hmm. Look up Pinocchio, P-I-N-O-K-I-O. It's every paid app free that are all open language source models, all on one app without having to go to GitHub, without having to copy the repository and this, that, and the other. It's all push one button and then you open up and then you choose the apps that you wanna use. You download that up, boop, and the UI is right there on your computer, on your frame, what, on your hub. Wait, spell it again, Nokia app? Pinocchio, but P-I-N, K-I-O, P I N O K I O, Pinocchio. Ah, there it is. Yep. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous, Ooh. dude. Oh, it's ridiculous. Okay. Well, it's on another. It's on another planet of cool. What yeah, I just we're already on another planet right now. Yeah, no. But, but this right here is Runway ML, Eleven Labs, 
uh, ChatGPT, um, Dolly, um, Canva. Uh, uh, it it can even do uh, frame capture really? of your face. So you can do like if you have a video of something else that that is a, that is a view of somebody else, you can just film on your camera on your cell phone. And it, it cuts out your face and then it places it onto the actor of any film, any movie, any, and that's there. And so the the new thing in film, which I just saw a really cool whole um, seminar on how it was done, is there's a new system now in which you can edit your film. No, no, Pinocchio's on another level, dude. What I just showed you is on another level. Yeah, yeah. I almost really want to stop broadcasting so I can go play with it. Yeah, it's really crazy, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you what I just showed you, Joshua, is another thing, dude. So, And it, it was all made by a bunch of hackers that didn't want to have anybody have to pay for it because it's the new world, what we're talking about. Yep. And, and then so, so from there, I asked, because I started making little movies, and then I made another one because I was showing my friend on the phone, I was showing him how fast I could do it. He's like, I don't believe you. And I was like, fine, give me a movie idea. And he goes, okay, two guys are lost on a stranded, stranded on, a, on an island. They can't leave because they're sharks. And across the uh, small little ocean, there's a party <laughs> island that they were on, but that's how they got on a boat wreck and they can't get back to the island because of all these sharks that are in the way on the other way. Oh my God. Make a movie of that. And I was like, done. And so I made all the movie and made the pictures, did everything, posted it. And it's now on my Facebook with uh, a whole movie and soundtrack, just like the one you just saw. And it's, uh, and it's the voice of uh, Lindsey Graham, the politician doing the voiceover. <laughs> That's okay. This, I, th we are going to spend four hours talking about everything else again. <laughs> Sorry, let's get into it. No, let's go back to James I, I, I love these conversations, but it happens every time with you because there's so many more interesting things to talk about. It's but so we hard. have to talk about James real quick. Yeah, we should. We should. My right. dog. My, my dog um, is now looking at me like, what are you doing? Um, so I want to ask you something. So I got this comment. And, you know, I'm not a history buff. I didn't pay attention in school. I, I know what I know. And when I entered, when I had that secret recording of James, which yeah. I wish I could redo now because I would have been able to do it much better. But, you know, whatever. I, I, I'm self-taught. I do all this by myself. I'm doing the best I can do. Whatever. I would have done much better quality if I could do it today. That said. I wasn't in the mood to start like trying to fact check him. Like I was just listening for what I knew, but some things I need to pull this up. So yesterday I, oh, I can share with you. Okay. I, I'm going to share yeah. my screen with you. Okay, cool. So let me do it like this. Um, doo -doo -doo. Where's my YouTube? Okay. So here's my YouTube. Um, where is it at? Comments this thing right here so i didn't know this can you see it, it says tiger river is a prison in south kind of in south carolina in his delusional mind he thinks he was abroad on a covert mission and hold on there's another one in here too um this guy says the tigris river is not in el salvador um <laughs> so there's all this these comments on this video about and the tigris river Right. So I asked I asked Jen about it to ask James um, to get his explanation, and he sent me one. I've just got a voicemail from him, so I, I'm I'm doing this on purpose. Uh, sure. Reading this, so let me go to my voicemail because I'm going to read you. Are you kidding me? Did I really delete the freaking voice? <laughs> so, I I have this obsessive habit from my days that were not i wasn't my best uh oh my gosh there's not trash anyway he sent me i can't believe i did that Dad gum it oh i know what i was gonna do i was gonna call him do you have his number i do but i don't know that we can um i don't know if it'll go through let's i'll give you the number that he calls me from all the time though uh so let me see if i can he just I called me a little while ago let he me tell you the number. Him. The number yeah, that right. I have. Are I you calling him? him? Okay. I'm not in right now. Leave me 
video message and it's on your call, and I will return your call. But this would be better if this is a radio show. It would make more sense than a podcast. Hey, James, it's Joshua giving you a call. I'm on an interview with uh, our mutual friend, Paul Carpenter. Hit me back. We're going to put you uh, live if you if you can uh, give me a call. Bye. Okay. Um, I want him to talk about this because I believe James. I believe him. I believe him because I've seen the letter um, of the guy that said I'm, I, I I had to make it up. <laughs> you pressured. You have, you have the you have five five nine two zero one six nine one six. Yeah, that's the one I just called. Called okay. That's the voicemail line. He has a direct line, but uh, it's the, is it 708-577-9707? I don't know that one. Hold on. Hey, Paul's guy, Johnny. No, that was me. <laughs> that didn't sound like him. Um, um, no, I, I, so I he'll, call back. Him. he'll call you back. Yeah, of course he will. He's so good about that. Um, yeah. So I believe him, and I don't really understand everything he's talking about. I don't know every intricate detail about Iran Contra. I don't know, I don't know all of those details. I just know about it, and I and I believe him because of the letter. However, there are some really interesting people around him, and that's kind of understandable considering the nature of what his accused crime is and right. the nature of what he talks about and the legend of his celebrity that people are aware of and one of the things that you know he's the guy that performed the tricks live and then he got busted and now he's not he can't really do the magic but even with that even him saying no i'm not really moving this uh phone book and all that other stuff there's some mystery around that too as mm, far what do you mean like there's there's a, I mean, as a magician huh? coming from my point of view as a magician there's yeah, no that's why I'm gonna ask there's, you this question. there's no mystery in it whatsoever for me and i and that was one of the things that i think that me and him became friends on mm -hmm. was that i i was like look i'm a mentalist i i bend forks i read minds i i do all the things you did i move objects you know uh so don't come at me like it's real first of all. And I think that when I did that to him and I asked him straight out, because I, I I don't know if I told you about this, but we had a very deep conversation about why he did it, why he lied. And in essence, it was a child because he was only 16, 17 years old and he yeah. didn't have the most intellectual uh, and emotional clarity um, from a, from a shitty childhood, obviously. Right. So, yeah. um, I, he said, look, man, the only things that I was into when I was a kid, which my teacher has mentioned, and it's, 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 it's been written down, was I was into martial arts, I was into magic, and I was into astronomy as a kid. That was it. That's what I loved. Those are the things I loved. And so as I got older... Time out. Time out. We're going to reset. I'm going to stop recording. We're going to go to st session two. There's a reason I'm doing this. Um, we'll be right back after this message. Okay, we're back with Paul Carpenter. We are talking about James Heydrich. We're talking about magic. Um, so, Paul, continue, my man. Yeah, so, uh, once again, I think the reason that we became so close and we talk, I mean, we almost talk almost every day now. Like, I don't know if you know this. Like, he calls me almost all the time. And we're at the point where I'm like, hey, man, I love you, bro. Be good. Uh, I hope you're okay. You know, like, we're, we're like that, you know? It's very weird, very cool. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I asked him straight out, you know, why, why'd you, why'd you lie about it? And he said, um, as a kid, I wanted to learn more martial arts. And when I was meeting with these grand masters, they wouldn't teach me. And then when I started to show them that I had these abilities, they started sharing with me, uh, secrets of Kung Fu that they wouldn't share with anybody else. And so this is one of the reasons why he used the techniques to uh, ingratiate himself to those. And then it, it's, it's, that, it's the story like any other story. 
he used it to get something out of it. And then the story got too big and it got too big out of his hand, out, out of control. And by the time he was, he was already on with James Randi and it was late. Dude. And I, I, I've been there when being insecure, not feeling like I was good enough and not feeling like it was worthy of anything. Like I remember adjusting who I was to try to fit in. I, I remember even making it, I was the worst liar ever, ever, ever. I mean, I just made up lies for stupid reasons. I made up lies because I was so insecure and I was trying to be cool and I wanted people to like me. I just wanted to feel accepted. I wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel like I belonged. I, I was desperate for that. So I promise you, I would have done something 50 times worse than what he did. I, to listen, to when he said it to me, it immediately alleviated everything inside of me. Like, A, because of his honesty. This is the thing about James. Like, the thing about James is that when you talk to him, there's no, there's no moments of, oh, wait, let me think about that so I can give, no. It's the same story every time. It's the same locations. It's the same things that happened to him. It's the same story of the van. It's the same story of uh, of meeting the people in jail in six months. And uh, it's the same story of hanging out with uh, with uh, uh, Frank before and after the before that he never that that weren't mentioned. And then the four missions that he was on uh, that he mentions and he says like you know out of them out of the four one of them has been declassified. So you can't say. It's not true, period, at that point. It, declassified, bro, his name's in the document. Go screw yourself, right? And then there's the idea of like Bo Keeley. And Bo Keeley has, you know, he's been trying to pr print this book for years and he, he can't get it printed. Nobody wants to print the book. But he has 300 documents, pictures, photos. He has pictures of James and, um, and, uh, and Frank on the top of a building in Chinatown during a coup de cay. So you can't say it's not real. Can't say Frank Dukes didn't do it. Can't say blood sports not real. Yeah, the, the whole blood sport story is way more interesting than the movie shows. Oh my God. The movie did nothing to the actuality of what yeah. the insanity of what is that what that is. And the people who are involved, the people who are gambling, the people who are gambling, because when you actually find out, and by the way, they're still doing Kuda case to this day. Yep. But now they're doing it like super underground with VPNs and cameras and people watching from their homes, their million dollar estates. And they're having like these like, like, like weird satellite parties where they watch these guys kill themselves. It's like they do a snuff, film. snuff films, but live snuff films yeah. that they're paying to see. Watch, yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, so I, Bo Keeley won't talk to me because I told him I think I I talked I brought up God or talked about God. <laughs> he, was, he won't talk to me. He he. If you say the word God, he will never talk to you again. So don't even even if you said I hate God. He will not talk to you anymore. You're not allowed to say that name. At least that's what I was told. And, you know, I'm stubborn and still talked about God because I love God. <laughs> I can't not talk about it. So, yeah, he won't talk to me. So I run my chance of getting those photos. <laughs> right, well, supposedly, uh, if I'm because I just wrote to him today. And I have his email address. I'm supposed to write to him. I'm going to try to get him to be on the show and be uh, without being on camera and just have his voice. And if I can get all three of them on camera together. Oh, my God. Oh come my on. Do you know how much of an exclusive that is? It's the first time in 30 years that they've all been on camera or in an interview together. I, I'm, oh, you know, I'm banned from doing, talking to him. I mean, he can call me direct, but I can't do any more prison visits. At I won't Columbia. be able to after this one either. I won't be able to after this one no, either. I have a letter. I have a letter from the hospital. Saying HIPAA, I'm HIPAA, 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 the HIPAA bullshit? Fuck that. No, it wasn't that. It was that I broke the rules. Like, I, I said I wouldn't record. I don't remember seeing that part in the 
assignment document I signed, but I was going to record anyway, because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like, how do you not record? A, I mean, I personally believe, and again, some people don't even know who James Heydrich is. Right. I think his story is one of the most important stories that ever can get out. And, and so I, I had to take my chance, man. Like, I, 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 how many opportunities do you get to interview a famous guy that's locked up behind bars that has this story? <laughs> and then on top of that, like, he even said to me today, he goes, listen, I want you to know something. He goes, I've had a lot of people ask me to do this interview. He goes, and I'm not giving it to anybody but you, Paul. He goes, you have to understand that. He goes, you want to know why? And I'm like, ah, of course I want to know why. He goes, because, bro, you've been straight with me from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Like, there was no fucking rounds. You pick up my phone call when you need, when I need you. You're always there. And you've been real straight with me. Look, look I want you to check out this website. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you want to share it, but it's Koalinga Whistleblowers with an S dot blogspot dot com, which is his new website. Let's see. Whistleblowersblog.org. No, right. it's no go go to your URL and write it all in is one thing. One one word. Koalinga whistleblowers dot blogspot dot com. And it'll pop right up. And it's not showing up on Google. Oh, is it because it's not indexed or? No, because they don't want this to be seen. Oh, here we go. So, okay, good. We're on here. And this is actually being created by his girlfriend. Jen? Outside. Right. Yeah. She's the one who's actually putting this all together. He's telling her what and why and when and all the stuff. I Barbara, this Barbara lady right here, yeah, is a fascinating woman. She's a uh, wow, yeah, Barbara right here. This I've talked to her a few times, and she's especially interested in the connection uh, to Iran Contra. Yeah, of course. Yeah, she's a nice lady, man. She's uh, this is a great article. I'm actually gonna put that in the notes. The yeah, show I'm notes. telling you, dude, this girl's putting together a phenomenal blog post, a phenomenal blog about what's really happening at this place. Like, there's even a story here: uh, the behavioral specialist at Coalingal arrested for accused sexual crimes with a child. Yeah, th th this is the guy right here, Brandon Price. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, his emails right there. Uh, <laughs> I uh, he's the guy that I got the letter from. Hi, Brandon. In case if you're watching, <laughs> how you doing, man? I'm yeah, not man. the only one. I told you I wasn't going away. No, no. Oh, we know what's going on. We want, well, the truth is going to get known, dude. The truth will be known. They got footage inside the hospital. Inside the hospital, bro. Everything, bro. He's giving it all out, bro. He's putting it all out. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta. I'm gonna change my shared screen real quick. Hold on. This is interesting. Um, stop presenting. Present. So, can I? Crazy Jay. I don't approve of this. Uh, this language. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mute, All right, mute, let's mute, this Hold on. One, one, two, three. We sitting here having a little drink, having a little sip. How's it taste, Mr. Barker? Oh, it's on here. It's on here? It got kicked to it. Mr. Barker say it got kicked. Definitely too. got kicked. Definitely got kicked? Yeah. I think that's what you call that what? Swamp nigga, what is it? That's what you call that what? It's just your good shit, swamp nigga. What's it? Boom boom, boy. It's the what? It's the what? Boom boom, man. It's the what? This big head nigga says, "Do you know what this is gonna do, or am I just playing video for no reason? Do you know? Why can't I hear you? Oh, I have no idea what we're about to watch. Uh, what you're? If I were you, I would kind of just not. I would push mute. I would zoom through it at the bottom just so you could see what's going on without actually 
uh, you know, giving away the whole video. I think they're just trying to show the interior of the location, where they live, and how they're jailed. Yeah, this is supposed to be a rehabilitation hospital. This is not showing anything. Never mind. Um, this is supposed to be a rehabilitation hospital, not what it is. I mean, it's a jail. It's just simply a jail. It's simply a jail. That's all it is. Oh, my. Okay, so everyone, kalingawhistleblowers.com.blogspot.com or kalingawhistleblowers.blogspot.com is it. So you guys got to check this out. I, I could sit here for hours and this is not entertaining, but this is what's happening there. So I, where it hits home for me, and I and I I love James at this, I mean, at this point, James and I are friends. And so, I mean, I love him and and I, and I believe him, but I get to talk to a lot of the civil commitment. In fact, I, when we started this, I got a call from MSOP in uh, Moose Lake, Minnesota. And there are people that have been held for over 20 years with no charges, no charges, no. never been charged, and they have no shot of getting out of prison unless if the mother effer burns down. Like, there's no... There's no fair trial, nothing. And let me tell you how easy this can happen to anyone. And this is why the general public should care. Say you go out, you go to a bar and you have some drinks and you get a little inebriated and a girl's kind of hitting on you, feeling the grooves. And you decide just to be a jackass dude and you slap her on the butt or something like that. You can go to a shadow prison under the guise of civil commitment and you could be called a sex offender because of that you know why i know that because i know the dude ha i know a guy that it happened to happened to yeah story after story and if you've ever been a drunk ass you've ever been on drugs you've ever been any of that stuff here's the thing it could happen to you it honest to god like you just have one of those stupid moments because you drink too much and this is another reason i don't drink anymore but you could have had one of those stupid moments and look drunk people do stupid things you are you are you are at risk and that is a fact that it, there's i have story after story you can go to my youtube channel there's story after story from these prisoners and they all check out and and look there are some guilty people absolutely sure sure here's the, sure. Other, reason, here's the other reason i care there are people with chronic disabilities people that are in wheelchairs that are obese that are in ill fitting wheelchairs I cannot begin to tell you as someone that was in healthcare for over 18 years how important if you have somebody that's wheelchair bound they have to be seated correctly or the damage that you can be doing to them is so bad it is worse than torture because a decubitus ulcer in the way that some of these happen especially if they're not treated correctly it will rot you from the inside out and that is happening to prisoners there. I have secret art, another form of secret audio of malpractice. And I've I've sent it to every news, CNN, ABC, everyone. They don't, and no, they don't care. There is, it's criminal behavior. There's the American for Americans for Disability Act, the ADA even denied looking at this documentation that I have. They won't touch it. But yet there's, they are, they are, it's like they're doing it on purpose. There's people that are suffering for no reason. It's not just James. There are people with real medical issues that are not getting treated. It is cruel and inhumane. Prisoners get treated better than these people. And it sucks. It's so wrong. It's beyond James. I know we're talking about James, but this is a problem. And this is all over the United States. And a side note, if you don't know the term civil commitment, do you know that it also happens with celebrities? That's how they legal. That's how they have handlers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to share that. No, really it, quick. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, Joshua. Man, look at what happened to Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Running around with knives and dancing. Have you have you ever read the book The Undetectable Mind Control Slave? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, so, what I wanted to mention before you said that was, have you ever have you ever looked at the story of um, two different gentlemen? One of them is uh, Cat Williams. Yeah, just watched a thing on him yesterday. Wow. 
And the other one is show me the money. Who's that? Tom Cruise. Who's the other person? Oh, what is his name? Cuba, Cuba Gooding, Gooding Jr. Jr.? Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr. Is that who that is? Where is he? That's all you need to do right there. Exactly. That's all you need to do. Exact, Dude, look it up. Look it up. Where did he go? Did, did, were you the one who shared with me the N word? The, oh, the N factory? Oh, man, you beast for showing me that. Yeah, man. Uh, speech from Arrested Development did that and highly recommend that one too. His speech is good people, man. He is well, good. Uh, I wish he would have continued with it in the way that he made the first two episodes because third and fourth is just him kind of briefing. And he didn't have, I obviously, I don't think he had the funding to continue filming the way he did because the third and fourth episode are, just, are not the way the first and second episode are. First and second episode look like a TV show. So what I think was happening was he was trying to produce a TV show. He got these two episodes done through some friends of his or whoever spent the money, 10, 20 K, whatever it was, got a really good representation of what he wanted, tried to get somebody in the media to pick it up. And as soon as they saw that, they were like, go fuck yourself. Cause they don't want that to be known. And then mm -hmm. if you look at episode three and four, it's just him in front of a camera going, okay, guys, this is me giving you an update on, on the end factory. And it's just a, like a talk. And the fourth one's the same thing. And it's like, oh, shite, what happened? Because you were doing so well, you know? The series had some legs. Wait a second. You only saw two of them? Yeah. There's more than that. No, there's four. It's on his page. Okay. I, I remember four, four full length though. Yeah. But what I'm telling you is that the, the, the two that are, uh, let me, the, 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 uh, the two that are the four, the three and four, mm -hmm. although they are 20 or something odd minutes long, it's just him talking into camera. It's not like episode one and two were. Man, I, the reason I keep, it seem, I swear I saw four like regular episodes that all look the same. Like, I wonder if he had to take a ticket. Did you see the one where he talks about Jay-Z? I'm, I'm looking straight up on Speech's page right now. And if I go in there and I go to his playlist, he has, I believe in the playlist, he has, and if he doesn't, give me a second. I was just looking at the, I was just on the video. So give me that. Hold on. Here it is. And this is four years ago. It was an update. And on the update, if you look inside, the, the it says that it says the N Factory Part 1, then N Factory Part 2, then an update, then M Factory Part 3. It's also an update. And then and speeches address about the thing is another him standing in front of camera. And then only speaking the word, the world that I know is him talking into camera and rewarded for respecting black women is also just talking into camera. But the first two, part one and part two of of the of the end factory is absolutely ridiculous. OK, there's a problem. I just looked at it. He had to have changed it because I interviewed him five years ago. Yeah. So this number three that says the final the update is from four years ago he had to have changed it something had to have happened really because i didn't because live I I, I click I didn't on one, LA if i click years. on it if i click on one and go to part one it's there if i click on part two and i go to the description now you've seen the first episode of Nick now that you've seen the first episode of the factory right and then so then if i go to that and i click on episode three or what would be considered the third part, artists rewarded for disrespecting black women. And then it says, speech update nigger, sorry, factory uh, ex, uh, three is where it says, it says uh, three. What's up, family? I'm excited. Uh, and it, it's okay. just him in front of a backdrop, somewhat like mine. And it says, speech update uh, and factory three, explosive final episode. 
Yeah, but it's there, different. It, there's something okay. wrong. And then, and then it goes into the speech's address. And then once What's again, up, family, this is your brother's speech. Um, <laughs> oh wait, this one's huge. Hold on. Really want to thank Hold on. For this one has screen. a big. No, this one's just uh, Snoop Dogg apology. Da, 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 da. Don't forget uh, to subscribe. Da, 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 da. But it doesn't talk about the no. Okay, so this isn't it. And then if I look at the uh, the last one, like I was saying, it's all him just talking in front of the. Yeah, there's something different. There, he, the, something's changed. I, I, I'm, not, I didn't live in L.A. when that video came out, so right. something's wrong. But I do want to ask you something. What was your, yeah. because everyone should watch this, regardless of if it's changed or not, it is yeah. eye-opening. Yeah. What was your like biggest said, the thing factory? Oh, I thought it was an absolute uh, 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 amazing piece of media that he put together. I was so uh, taken aback. Um, and and it's, it, it's, it's overwhelming how much of what he's talking about is real like mm -hmm. like so real and why certain rappers are famous for longer than other people and how they play into the game and they're willing to on some level sell their soul sell their sell their their race into oblivion you know it's really intense bro dude it is it is intense and then you know it's the whole music industry's got a problem but Hip hop, the, the purpose of this video in my eyes was to show the effects on the black community that's happening and seeing how these people that have we've been told that, that are heroes and these are the people that we should look up to actually are every bit as bad as the white man ever dreamed of being. Right. Like every bit. It, it's awful. And it's of course, I have my own theories about where all this all comes from, and that's just going to get us kicked off of every platform imaginable if I start talking about that. But it is bad. Now, now let me let's talk about you real quick and the um, your experience in the as a magi ma magician and really in the entertainment industry. Sure. I don't know if it was you I asked this. No, it wasn't you I asked this question, but I'm going to ask you this question. The things that we perceive to be evil, especially in the entertainment world, is there any deception in what that evil is versus the things that are portrayed to be nice and holy and pure and amazing? So, in other words, what I'm an example. I got the it. Christian, I got the Christian it. music industry. Sure. Versus hip hop, and again, we just talked about In Factory and the bad, but like you know, when we see these bands that are like throwing up devil horns and they've got the pentagrams and the black sure. and the makeup and all versus the Christian music that is, you know, like, Oh, we're holy. We're praising Jesus and all of that other stuff. Can you talk about the deceptions within all of that from your perspective? If well, any, I, yeah, sure. I think that what it is, if you look at it from a macro point of view, there's certain groups that have control over Hollywood. And, and an overall uh, control that's come from the government at this point, which we've gotten into. We've talked about Hollywoodism. We talk about how it got taken away and all that. So um, it, it, I believe that if you look at it, you've got uh, the, um, what's the name of the, this Scientology is one of the groups. Mm -hmm. Then you have the um, Jewish money groups. Then you would have um, the Christian world. Mm -hmm. Then you would have the African American world. Uh, something like a Tyler Perry trying to own BET now, right? I think he just bought it. As a matter of yeah. fact, so uh, which was a smart move for him to do because he already has a studio. He has everything ready to go. Everything he needs. Get smart. Get smart. Get smart. Anyways, um, um, so I believe that it's it's used as a form of manipulation so in the same way that uh rap 
uh, of a certain type could create a resounding chamber of uh, the end factory, like we were talking about, in the same way that uh, country music can be used as a, a, a resounding chamber and so on and so forth, so can, you know, uh, any form of music. And so, so can uh, Christian style music. I mean, look, we, you know, there's so many different, let me look at Katy Perry and how she was a Christian singer. She tried to become famous. She couldn't make any money in that realm. And she moved to this other realm and made lots of money and kissed a girl and liked it. Is is selling your soul to the devil really what people describe it to be? Or is it more a figurative kind of thing? Like, is it, uh, well, actually just explain it from your perspective. Because it's not like you get a contract with the devil. The devil pops out of a box and goes, okay, here's your paperwork. Sign right here. It it is like that on some level though, though. right? Well, it really, on, I, I really, I'm not trying to be weird, <laughs> Josh. But on some level, going into the deal and signing the contract, when you do so, in the same way when you join the military, you give them all of yourself for that contract. So in essence, that is the devil. In essence, you are selling your soul for the fame and the fortune and the and and, and so signing that contract uh, that, that is is the even if it's the not even the first one, but the third or the fourth or the fifth that gets you into ACA or AAA or a, whatever the big, you know, uh, industry agency is where they get you everything. And what is it? CAA. C-A-A. Yeah. So let's say CAA picks you up and you sign a deal with them. And then, you know, within a year, you're, you have all of the, everything already sold for you, a book deal, two movies, this, that, and the other, and you're in the system. So you now are beholden to that system. If you want that career to take off, there's a very good video of Denzel Washington uh, talking about uh, the industry going back to cat williams talking about the industry talking about certain people being gay and and uh and and why they're around each other a lot uh it's because they have these um endeavors that they take on as you have a handler uh you should have you should also handle and as your handler does to you, you should do to the person that you handle. And in doing so, you prove to them that you're willing to be inside of the system. That's right. That's how I, that's how I observed it for myself. Okay, it's, ex- it's exactly what it is. Like so, like look at, and I don't want I don't want to put names out there because I love this gentleman, but you know this is something that Cat Williams has said about this person in particular. And uh, this person met one person in particular who is supposedly the golden maker of of uh hollywood and right after that he does a movie about a singer who's blind and right after that he does this that and the other and then he opens up a record label and all of a sudden this guy who is supposedly his quote-unquote partner supposedly is now the first person that he signs to that label which is a little Um, and this guy's obviously not very well known. He's not a very famous singer. He's trying to come up. And so it's coattails, just as though he did the coattails of the person who gave him the, and so he's doing the same thing that he had to do. He's showing somebody else what they have to do. And I've heard of stories and, you know, of, uh, many very famous, well-known rappers and other figures that all have these parties with producers and directors and people who have lots of money who want to watch them entertain them Mm -hmm. in whichever form and fashion they want to be entertained (laughs) i saw another documentary recently about uh instagram models and uh the dubai yeah that one's good 
That's how it's basically the same thing that Hugh Hefner did of the Playboy Mansion. It's the same system, but in Dubai, which is even probably even more terrifying. Well, I mean, buckets of of urine and, and feces. Yeah. Fifty thousand dollars so I can degrade you. I don't want to have sex after my own poop. <laughs> I just want to bathe in it. Oh, my God. Like, I wish I didn't watch that one. It was a, it was a very, but, and then, and then now, and now when I see Instagram models all the time on, on Instagram, I'm like, oh, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. They were always going after these big fish. This only fans $5 a month ain't shit for them when they're getting paid 50 K a, a, a trip to Dubai. I'll to take a 50 K. I'll take one 50 K trip a month three days get shit on come home fuck it i couldn't do it i mean listen if i was a girl who never went to college who doesn't have anything who doesn't have much intelligence going on who isn't very with it had some guy running her okay uh, only fans anyways who's now basically her pimp this is why dads be a good dad <laughs> be present because if not this shit happens. And let me, I, I don't, I've never. And you've heard of that be, whole system oh, too, right? Be, what? You've heard of that whole system too, right? The whole system of like guys who are like their internet e-pimps. Yeah. And they, they run these girls accounts. Like these guys who are, you know, they thinking think that they're only, only fans talking to the girl. They're talking to some guy behind the, behind his Porsche or behind his Lamborghini while he's laughing at you paying $40 for a picture. I, I don't want to say who it is because I don't want to embarrass somebody, but there was someone very, 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 very close to me that had all this happen to him. And when I say very close, I don't think you can get any closer. And that's all I'll say. Okay. And it's, I mean, you can, anyone can read between the lines, but I'm not saying their name because, uh, or even going further because I don't want to. Right. Fuck. But it, it, it's, but it, this shit is real and it's no joke. And like, all of you parents that want to give your kids a cell phone, you're you're effing stupid. Like you're stupid. Right. Well, I mean, you're stupid. You're stupid. You know, you're the, stupid. Thing like, is, the thing is, like we're getting into this weird conversation now about <laughs> about him. futurism and about futurism and what we can accept and what they are already accepting. You know what? Fair yeah. point. And it, it we're almost you almost sound like a 1940s or 50s. Damn those kids with their rock and roll music. It's almost where you're at. And and the thing is, and I've caught myself in this world, and I've said I'm not going to allow myself to do that, which is why I'm excited about futurism. Why I'm excited about this stuff. And then I was telling you, I I wanted you to share. I wanted you to share something else. Uh, I'll share this if you don't mind. Uh, one last thing with you because uh, it's such a beautiful piece. And this was, uh, I made it with ChatGPT, as I was telling you earlier. Um, and so I think you can see my screen now. And this was, in my opinion, this is actually really quite beautifully done. And it's this piece right here. Hold on. <laughs> so cool. It doesn't even need words. But <laughs> I wish I knew what they were saying. 
Oh, you can't hear it? No. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I was just enjoying the visuals. Oh, which man. Whole, I, I wrote this amazing uh, script that went along with it, right? Uh, I went to ChatGPT, and I wrote the actual – let me see if I can find it. Um, I wrote this this thing, and then I went to ChatGPT, and I was like, "Yo, you know, I'm not a very good writer." <laughs> so you hey, know, make we're gonna make take a quick right. break. Hold on, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Another one. And we're back. Okay, Bob. <laughs> so. Um, let me see if I can find what I wrote. Texas prison's calling now, huh? Boy, the uh, the civil commitment prison is uh, there must be something going on. No, what, just what, what back you... to civil commitment. I so I just got a call from MSOP before we started, and now the right. Texas facility just called. Which is, and I and James is called today too. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Wrong number. Wrong number. You called the wrong number. <laughs> no, they called the right number. <laughs> no, I'm saying you and me. Um, oh. So here's what I wrote. Okay, I'll read to you what I wrote, and then what ChatGPT gave me. Okay. So, um, I go. The best we can do is know that anyone with great knowledge and no need for power and control will become be benevolent in its nature allowing those who want to move forward to do so those who ultimately want to be forgotten uh to a bygone era can do so by, uh, but they will most likely end up in a museum or zoo the future comes faster than most would like to admit and our circadian our circadian rhythms and uh rhythms of nature cannot comprehend the speed at which general artificial intelligence will show up um, uh, and the progression in the field it may be more, no more than 10 years. So this is kind of the way I wrote it. And this is what it gave me back. And I asked it to, you know, make it sound better. And it says, the best we can do to, is to understand that anyone within anyone endowed with great knowledge and no desire for power and control will naturally become benevolent. This allows those who wish to progress to do so, and those who prefer to be relics of a bygone era can also have their place, although they may be likely end up in a museum or zoo. The future <laughs> arrives faster, right? So then I said, wait, um, I said I need that as a script, and then it goes, uh, and I go clean it up because I wanted you to add this extra thing, it goes, and it says this now. The utmost achievement with our, within our grasp is the realization that those endowed with vast knowledge, yet devoid of a thirst for domination, will inevitably gravitate towards benevolence. This nature paves the way for innovation to forge ahead, while those who cling to antiquity might find themselves preserved as relics in the quiet halls of museums or the curious displays of zoos. Time's relentless march propels the future upon us with unprecedented swiftness, a pace so brisk that our innate circadian rhythms falter in its wake. The advent of general artificial intelligence looms on the horizon, a beacon of the near future. It emerge, its emergence is forecasted not in the distant eons, but within a mere decade, perhaps even sooner, heralding an unprecedented connectivity. In this eminent realm, the entirety of human knowledge will unfurl at our fingertips, transforming the landscape of information into accessible, boundless plain. The vanguards of intellect, the most brilliant minds, will no longer be figures to revere from afar, but will become our mentors, guiding us through this uncharted expanse. Foreseeing a fusion of flesh and circuitry, the next epoch will be characterized by the harmonious integration of humanity and its techno technological progeny. This synergy will not merely be an alliance, but a profound confluence propelling us into the celestial sphere. Our aspirations will be interstellar, our ambitions cosmic, as we seek to inscribe humanity's signature across the galaxy. Our primeval 
genetic tapestry may be well unfurled across alien worlds woven anew to suit the fabrics of undiscovered planets. Such a future where human DNA is both a legacy and a canvas stands as the testament to the limitless potential of our species, intertwined with its inexorable march of progress. Time out. Time out. James is calling. Oh, oh, we're in. Let's go. James. Hi. Say hi to Paul. I'm here. Say hi to Paul. Hi, Paul. Hey, James. How are we How's doing, man? Frank? Fine. Hey. Frank says he's on board. Frank's on board. Okay. And I already, and I posted it on wow. Facebook already. Uh, and I posted it all over the internet. So it and it's getting a, a like a lot of people are already clicking on it and excited about it. So yeah, man, this is gonna be a good one. And I'll write. James, I'll let me let. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go, no, no, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. I said I said in my post, holy crap! I'm super excited. On Friday, 12 p.m. afternoon, my 12, your 10. Uh, James Hydrick, world-renowned martial artist, psychic performer and Frank Dukes of Bloodsport, the greatest martial arts movie ever, will be my guests. We'll be talking about the real MK Ultra, what happened to them, and where they are now. Plus, check out the whistleblower website created uh, about the harm and death happening at the Koalinga Hospital, where Frank is today. Uh, this is an exclusive in interview not had by anyone in over 30 years. This will also be the first time yep that they have seen each other in 30 years. Catch the show on YouTube, Rumble, Kick, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Yeah, last time I saw Frankie, it was in El Salvador. Okay, nice segue, James. So I want you to answer the question because I'm getting comments on the video about how the, Tigr <laughs> the Tigris River or whatever is not in El Salvador. And evidently you had made that comment on our interview. Would you please address well, that statement? Yeah, yeah here, here's the deal. Uh, a lot of these these areas that we, we were speaking about were coded uh, in case we got captured or enemy uh, got a hold of us. I think they were referring to a river known as the Coco River. And there's another one out of, uh, I'm trying to remember where it was. Um, let me see. Um, another one in... Uh, out of San, San Miguel, I, I left you a message regarding it. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's a river going from Nicaragua in, into El Salvador, and it's called, I think it's the the, uh, I said we called it El Tiger, but it was probably another river. Damn, what is the name of it? I keep trying See, to this is, this is the thing. This is the thing, uh, though, right? Like, you asked him, like, straight up, and there was no hiccup. There's not one moment of him going, ah, well, the thing is, you know, nothing. It's just like, no, the actual river's name is this, and here's why we called it something else. Like, there, you know what I mean? This is why I believe the man. Over no, I and believe over him too. Again. I just wanted him to have an explanation because I, I want him to well, use his Sam own Miguel, words to respond to those guys. San Miguel Harbor. That's the ODB operation came out as, officially at, uh, out of the San Miguel Harbor. Uh, the river that we were on. Uh, I'm trying to remember. If I'm not mistaken, it was called the Coco River or the Kyle. I think it was the, the, the language differences like Elka, Kajon, A, E L C A J O N, or something like that. But you gotta, I haven't spoken Spanish in so long. It's been a while since I practiced, but I know we got uh, Guatemala is above us, and then we have San Salvador and El Salvador on the coast. And uh, when we come in from Havana or wherever we come in from Jamaica into Costa Rica, we will go from Costa Rica into Nicaragua from the beach area into Honduras. And we'll catch that river, the Coco River or the Agora River, and go down until we 
meet up with whoever we're going to meet up with, and we change over into a different type of uh, marine vessel. I, again, I'm right, going to say, Joshua, I'm going to say it. How does somebody make all that up, bro? Uh, I don't know. I a lot of mushrooms and encyclopedias. I don't know. I don't think he's making it up. I know. That's what I'm saying. For those who are out there, for those people who are out there who are like, oh, I don't believe it. You know, I don't believe James Heydrich. You know, I'm like, bro, how can you not when the guy is so like, I, I mean, who? Okay. Maybe. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and be devil's advocate here. I was just going to say, I hold on, hold on. No offense to you. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, James. No offense. I was about to say, who in their right mind would actually memorize all this information and blah, 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 to just prove a point. But then again, we're talking about James Heydrich, who used to fake being a psychic. So, like, you never know. But, but I doubt it. But you're not, he's not making this up. So I know he's not. I think I think being a psychic because I was ashamed of my childhood. Don't don't penalize me for being ashamed of my childhood. I'm not. I'm not. I became a powerful person, and my power and my strength came from abuse. I don't want people to know that shit. Wow, James, wow. I love you, man. I love you too, James. I love you so much, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, no. I had to tell people. Ed Parker told me, do not tell them about your childhood. This, your training yes. and your uh, abilities are seen nowhere else in the United States. No one will be able to explain your sense of training and your advancement in reading body language and, and, and all that. So, you know what? I did exactly what Ed Parker asked me to do. And you know who was there? Bob White was there when that happened. Okay, so... We were in, uh, uh, Again. I mean, how do you not fucking believe this man? How do you not believe, how can anybody I, not believe this man? Go I ahead. Sorry, I, James. I'm sorry, I, James. The only thing I knew is I knew the way of the Shaolin and I, my way of life was consistent with the way of Shaolin and, uh, that was, there, was, there was no other way to explain my abilities and my senses and my ability to predict, to perceive, or to uh, uh, inspire others other than having a Shaolin spirit. Mm -hmm. I watched Kung Fu uh, with David Carradine from 70 to 1974. And, and you're talking about something that inspired you and changed your whole aspect of life. That, that's what it did. So, of course, that was better than telling you my mother tied me up to the trees with the dog, beat me every day, stuck pants, put cigarettes out on my feet and my back, and fed me slop in the yard. And that's a matter of public record. All you have to do is go to Psychic's Confession and listen to my mother say, you know, it's a sad thing, but it's the truth. That is true. And so his I brother backs that up, too. James's brother backs all that up. Yep. And, yeah, uh, hey, I think we're all even, children even of a Bishop Romero. Even Bishop M Romero, when he baptized me at the cathedral there in El Salvador, told me that all of my past will be blessed and turn into strength. Four weeks later, they assassinated Bishop Romero. You know that? Yeah. Oh. Bishop Romero. Whoa. Hey, do you think you were part of? Hey, James, James, do you think you were part of some type of MK Ultra mind control programming that you weren't told about? I told you about this. I, 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 we had this conversation. I that I just know that I was handpicked and singled out, even at the institution at Witten Center, uh, on special units where I was with higher functioning individuals and I was allowed to do a lot of things that no, most people weren't allowed to do. And I was taught things that no other individual was taught. And Robert Fletcher, who was, was a child, my child psychologist at the time, introduced me to Kang Sudo at the time. And 
that's what took me off in the martial art field at, at age uh, nine years old. I, I, I arrived at Witten Center on February 14, 1969. I remember all of that. I remember when I got discharged, uh, uh, December 31st, 19, uh, 1970, yeah, 19, December 31st, 1975, I got discharged from Witten Center. Jeez. Um, um, when I, uh, I, I, I never experienced social, I, you know, like, you know how you go to school and you socialize with your peers and I never experienced anything like that. So when they released yeah. me in 75, 31st of December, 1975 to the free world, I had no social experience at all. I didn't know how to act around people. I didn't know what was right, what was wrong. I just know mm -hmm. that being good with people was what you needed to be. And I ended up trusting people in LA. I got arrested for the robbery, kidnapping and shit like that. And, uh, uh, I did my time in L.A. County Jail, and uh, while I was there, I ran into Michael Rupert. Rupert introduced me to all kind of people, and uh, the training, uh, my training took off from there. I got educated by Rupert and his, and his uh, unit that, that was at the Hall of Justice Jail. I was the only inmate in the Hall of Justice Jail on 1310. That's a matter of records. Mm -hmm. A whole floor. For one individual, <laughs> Michael Rupert. Right, right. No, you're right. Yeah. Dad gum. And brother Gerald Schumann, the big, the big brother Gerald Schumann that everybody talks about in my Guess who uh, uh, Schumann worked for? Archbishop Romero. What? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. James, mm -hmm. how was how everything and at then, Col uh, Things. Bad. We had we had eighty eight patients die in the last two years. This year alone, we have already had twenty two patients die. We have the what? highest mortality rate of what? any institution in the United States at this rate, and it's in the water. It is the water. We have people having tumors out of their stomach, out of their rectum, out of their head, out of their eye, out of their nose. And we're no staff member is drinking the water here. We are the ones that are forced to drink the water. The bottled water that we're supposed to be water. And if you'll do a historical search on what Polina used to be before this, this area where we are, uh, before um, uh, plane was built. It was a place where they buried from a place called uh, uh, some airfield over here, uh, uh, Tulare Air, uh, Air Base or something. So, I oh mean, they're killing us. They're killing us. And they're abusing us. They are a bad to us. You will. Person walks down the road and looks at you and, and says something to you derogatory, you know he hates you. When he gives you that look that he that hate look, people in my shoes recognize a hate look. Yeah. We recognize a rape stare. We recognize trauma. All that. This is what we experience here with these staff members. They don't like us. They hate us. They only want wow. because the money is so damn good. Come on, who else would come here? work unless you make seven grand a month. Are you kidding me? That's a lot mm -hmm. of money. And the benefits mm -hmm. are off the hook. Wow. Wow. God, dude. Wow. 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 This out. The last phone call, the last phone number I had for Rupert was eight one eight eight seven seven eight seven nine one. That was that was in Sherman Oaks, California years ago. Are we talking about Rupert, Rupert Murdoch? What? Are we talking about Rupert Murdoch, Rupert? Michael C. Rupert. Michael C. Rupert? Rupert. R-U-P-P-E-T-R. I mean, E-R-T. <laughs> wow. Rupert. Michael Rupert. Yeah. The musician, the writer and musician? He is a writer, and he's a, 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 
he, he exposed the CIA for bringing crack cocaine into L.A. That's I who know who he is. He's the guy who's connected with uh, with uh, Rick Ross. Yeah, Rick, Free Ray Rick Ross, yes. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, where did the story end? Where did the story end? When we found out that they knew about our running drugs in Huntington Beach, me and Rick Ross had to shut it down, and we moved to Connecticut. We moved our operation into Connecticut, and while I was there, I appeared on the Sally Jesse Raphael show and then went from Connecticut uh, because the CIA uh, informant told me they're, they're trying to get you to lock you up because they think you're going to testify at the Senate hearings. I didn't even know nothing about no Senate hearings. This is in 87. 88. Wow, I went to Georgia, dude. I went to Georgia while everybody else was, was testifying uh, at the uh, uh, some hearings they were holding. And Oliver North, he can't be trusted. No. None of them can. What they did to South Central Los Angeles, F those guys. I did guys. operations in Greece. I did operations in Greece. I did operations in Cairo. I did operations in Lexar. Uh, I did operations in Thieves. And I did operations in, in Aswan. And if you don't mind, how many of these operations that you did were were you and um, Frank together? We, me and Frank only did two operations. We did Operation Boomerang and we did Operation Pegasus. And, and I think Frank's team did the cover at El, El Pion's upside uh, where the death squads were burying the uh, um, uh, victims of, of the uh, rebels, this, you know, the protesters, the resistance at the El Pion uh, dump site. And uh, 30 miles outside of El Salvador. Wow. Dude. Hey, you know what? And that, I've, I've talked to James, I think, 50 you know times now, it, and that's consistent. It was Frank's idea. It's the same it story. It's the same idea. story. Now, here's the big thing. Here's the big thing. For those who are watching, sorry, James. Hold on, James. For those who are watching, uh, James Heydrich has already admitted to not seeing uh, this man for 30 plus years. So how they are able to keep the stories the same throughout the last 30 years, for those who don't believe, uh, you know, that uh, the coup de cas were real or that any of that stuff's not real, there's proof in the pudding right now in the conversation you're hearing. I'll be quiet. James, keep talking. Well, Frank, it was Frankie's idea to set up the uh, identification uh, bunkers in uh, El Salvador, right outside El Salvador, uh, from the cathedral, uh, so that the victims of the death squads could be identified. When uh, we we did uh, security support for John Hooligan, he's a reporter. He, he I, I think he got killed, but I left, and and I think I heard he had got killed uh, uh, about a year after I left. Because uh, our assignment was done, all we did is provided him with security, uh, and he took photographs of all the bodies at the uh, El El Pallana. It's a dump site. It's like a old volcano dump site where the, all the bodies were being dumped by the death squads, and they were tied behind the bed. You can tell they've been raped. They've uh, children, women, uh, young uh, military age uh, men, uh, shot in the back of the head, stuff like that. He, so. He took and took photographs. We provided security while he took all the photographs. And I remember him uh, trying to figure out how he was going to get his films out. So he took the roll of films out. And he, uh, Frankie, he told him, let me see the hill. Who is that? Jen? Tell her I'll call her in a minute. Tell oh, Jen we said hi. So he, hi, he, Jen. Uh, 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 yeah. He, he took it away. But listen. So he takes this guy's boot shoe off, carves a little hole in it, to roll the film, and sticks it inside his boot, uh, boot heel and puts it back on his uh, boot. That's how he smuggled them out. All the footage. And guess where the footage went? 
a guy named Senator Edward Bolin. Why is that sound familiar? I mean, we did some pretty serious shit there, and they couldn't use military people because everyone knew what they looked like. So we were we tagged little uh, like uh, Volkina describes us as hillbilly uh, martial art. We was just blending in. We spoke broken uh, Spanish. What, what we can learn within six months throughout uh, 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 Fort out of Kentucky, Fort Stewart and uh fort, fort bragg and and uh john bates was my ceo and and they just trained us on on different aspects of spanish and uh how to maneuver and we had we had the best look department of defense covered everything uh uh, uh we have we were a subdivision of these groups um that uh, that that you they're like if we get caught we're done I mean, that's what you do. But the money was good. That's my sister. That's my brother. The money was good. I'd fly in in a helicopter to go visit them. I'd come in limousines, drop off five, ten grand. That's Lemuel Leopard when I walked up and handed him a briefcase with $50,000 cash in the briefcase. $50,000 cash. Who has that much money at 18, 19 years old? Six thousand dollars cash. He thought I robbed the bank. I couldn't even tell my brother and sister. The only reason my brother knows about it because he found one of my journals. Oh my goodness! I'm I'm gonna show this right now. Hold on. Um, Lord, James. Uh, uh, oh, hold on. On the, on the Keep talking, James. Keep talking. I'm gonna do something else. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, yes. Uh, who commits suicide shooting himself twice in the head? How do you shoot yourself twice? Suicide? They knew he was coming to testify. Him and him and uh, uh, him and um, uh, uh, Gary Webb both were going to testify. Gary Webb. Uh, uh, came to us in Nicaragua one time, right? Or uh, actually, it was Honduras uh, to meet Menace. And uh, he was doing a story called, I think it was called uh, Some Alliance, uh, Dark Alliance or something. And uh, they, they discredited his story. And everything he said in the story was absolutely correct. And what did he do? A, a man who has a family that he loves, a son, he just completely. This dude loves his family. He ain't gonna commit suicide. Another one. Two gunshot wounds to the head. Suicide? No. So, next thing you know, I'm being accused of something I didn't do. I, I, I mean, of course, I use kids to run drugs. Uh, and, and that was out of line. I understand that. But we either went, uh, uh, like Romero, uh, Rich, uh, not Romero, but uh, 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 Robert Romero who piloted a lot of our cocaine going from uh, Miami into Costa Rica, they used him to bring all them drugs back, and then they put him in prison. And, and Victor, too, they did the same thing to him. And then they come up with this kingpin status. I mean, everything we we did for them, they turned on us, and uh, when, we tried to, when we tried to go back and get information on what they were doing, they, they, all the records were, were either destroyed or, or uh, compromised. Oh my God! I mean, we were we were part of a Delta recon team. There was twelve of us. We ran in cubbies six at a time, and we were the elite. And and Tatum was with us. You had Tatum. You had uh, Frank Dukes. Me. You had Tic Tac. You had uh, 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 Raven. I mean, we don't know who we had sanitized uniforms. We don't know who, who, who we were working with. Um, only reason we knew who I, I knew who Frankie was because me and Frank trained with Al Thomas and Burbank in the early 70s, uh, studying Aikido and Kempo. When Frank, Frank was a sober today, Al Thomas is. Good job. 
Are you reading this? Frankie, uh, and his code name, I think they called him the ghost. Wow. He was so fucking lethal with a weapon. That man was a sniper. That old Charlie Five, that's what he was. That was his, his uh, civilian MOS. We were NGOs. We were not military. We were we were like NGOs. We'd go in the daytime down in El Salvador, uh, Santana, and we'd help them with their food, help them with run water, and, and help them pass out things and flyers and uh, get people to come to church, get them to bubble. At night, we were night stalkers. We went after the death call. We went after evidence that would support uh, this guy's uh, bolens, whatever uh, this that he uh, was trying to pass to shut them down because they went out, they took money that was going to uh, supposed to go to Iran and circumvented it to support the Contras by inflating weapons, uh, the prices of weapons or something like that. I'm, it's been so long, I, I just remember hearing bits and pieces about what, how, the, how the Contras got money and was refused to give them money. And these, when we'd go into warehouses, we'd find warehouses full. Like up at John Hall's, uh, uh, in Costa Rica, at John Hall's ranch. You would not believe. We, we sabotaged his airfield, set up traces for his uh, traffic and everything. Blew up his radar systems. And when we went into the uh, garage, you know, not the garage, but the warehouses, behind his house up on the hill, were there were pallets and pallets of blank traveler check who have american uh blank traveler check are you wait hey. james are you talking about john $100 holmes $100 the $100 porn $100 star $100. james are you talking $100. about the wonderland murders john holmes the porn star i don't know john holmes ranch in Holes. costa rica oh okay got it it's a guy named john holmes his big thing was, you know what? Uh, I got to tell you, he, he, you know, he's right. Um, look at what's going on right now. You got an open border. You got people coming in from Venezuela, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua. These these are military age guys. Why are they all coming over here at a time when we have a conflict with uh, Israel uh, uh, or uh, Palestine? Listen. That's what he was preaching back in the 80s. I thought he was crazy. He said that was going to be the landing uh, strip for Russia, the Soviet Union, and the communistas to come in from Cuba and from uh, uh, Venezuela and, into, and Honduras into the, uh, the United States and overpower our economic, our uh, 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 economy, which is what they're doing now. So, and, and what, would you call them for a minute? One second, give me a... Wow. Hold on one second. Every... Dan, hold on. Paul, everything he's Dan, talking about... You? Yeah. Uh, uh, Josh T. Berger. I mean, I mean, are you... Are, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm literally... As soon as I get off this interview. I know, he just emailed me. I need to talk. <laughs> Why? What? You doing this on the visitation, the television? No, we're doing it right now on the phone. Hi, Jen. You're on a live interview now. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a absolutely. What happened? Oh, Paul just hopped back on. He he got kicked off for a second. We got to hear from Jen, Paul. Okay, so. Yeah. So we, uh, I mean, we just, dude, they just, there's all kind of stuff that, that happened. I don't, I don't know how people, I, I don't think this stuff up. I was there. I've been locked up for the 30, the last 30, 30 years. I couldn't, I can't make this shit up. So, I have no access. Yeah, like you saw, you saw the pictures or you saw the videos or, or the, the stuff that I was showing. Were you yeah. reading that stuff? I mean, absolutely mind blowing. Every so James is somehow this is even crazier because it never ends because James's story is tied into current events now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 
Oh my God, this is insane. What John Hope was trying to prevent. That's why, look, here's, you know, the Reagan administration uh, was, was going to, they, actually, they were going to invade uh, Central America. Uh, they didn't, uh, for whatever reason, but uh, my understanding, talking with people that I knew and the, about a, uh, when I was, even when I was going to Egypt, I was on the same plane that delivered weapons into Cairo to be transferred per, per into, uh, 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 I think, Gordon or Tyran. And I couldn't believe it. They put them on civilian aircraft, weapons. And, and not just any weapons, certain types of weapons, uh, stingers and, and parts that make other weapons more accurate than normal. Um, uh, the hostages that were held in Iran from 79 up to 80, where they held them over the time that they were supposed to in exchange for the weapon <clears throat> and money from the Reagan administration. Uh, and I, my understanding is there was some type of agreement that they would hold the hostages an additional time period until the election, uh, and, and until oh, and Reagan oh tried to get my God. It, it, it's a whole crazy thing. I don't know how I got part of that history. I don't know how I fit, fit in, it, but I just know that at the time, even I didn't know uh, certain things. I was in Cairo when President Sadat was assassinated there at the airport in Cairo on the tarmac, and I saw the truck drive up with the guys on the back with AK-47 and lit up the podium. I was airborne when that happened. I was leaving Cairo. But the security that day that I went to the airport was was more than normal. So they knew something was up, but it was their own people who, who compromised the security and penetrated the dot. Uh, inner circle. Now, remember, so the dot married an American from guess where? Columbia, South Carolina. Wow. And you want to hear another thing? Guess who intercepted the expedition team uh, that extradited me from Georgia to California? Who did it? Sheriff Eddie King. Where is Eddie King from? Clarksville, Arkansas. As far as Clarksville, Arkansas, from Mana, Arkansas. Do you know what we did in Mana, Arkansas, back in the 80s? We trained the Contras. Wow. We brought, we flew in, we flew in drugs from El Salvador, Nicaragua, all over, straight into Arkansas. Uh, man, I dropped them above. We didn't have to land. We just dropped them from the air. Just dropped them. And they were picked up by the people that were assigned to pick them up. We trained them there. And then this idiot, uh, uh, a guy I used to run with, I don't know more, um, a guy, uh, what was his name? Um, uh, geez. Uh, Phil. Oh, I mean, I mean, Phil. Big old fat guy. Kind of arrogant idiot. <laughs> he, he he can't be trusted. He couldn't be trusted, and he he liked to brag about all kind of shit. Well, you know what he does? He he takes a deal on something, and then he gets on a plane and goes into the world. Just for viewers around the world. Videotapes. He videotapes um his his transaction. And what do you think the Madi Cartel is going to do when they see that shit? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know whatever happened to him. Uh, last time I heard, they were going to get his ass. And uh, it was uh, uh, him and uh, 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 who is it? Uh, 
uh, wait a minute, there's another, oh, uh, Ortega, Daniel Ortega, or Noriega. I think it was Noriega, yeah. So, I don't know, but Noriega, I think, went to prison because they got him on, uh, uh, Richard Machinko got him on, on uh, operate, one of those operations they did, which I wasn't part of. But, uh, I mean, we knew people like that. We knew Bobby Seale, uh, Billy Bottoms, uh, another idiot. I, I, and we, we have no choice of who we work with. We, and, and the district, you still got district attorneys in, in that area that get part of this, this whole drug running back. So they have a lot of reasons to keep me in here. It, uh, Ed King tried to get me out, uh, and he failed. And Ed King knows my contact in Arkansas. Ed King was a cadet when he met me before he became sheriff and i assisted in uh an investigation dealing with some three three uh no two two brothers or two boys that were killed who witnessed a drop a drug drop and uh they were murdered Jeez, man. by the railroad track so you know this is a lot of shit. i'm caught up in it i'm, I'm in a, this hospital right now and it's like there's nothing wrong with me. Not a damn thing wrong with me. But what they say, like me. Me, they say it's inside my head. They say it's inside my head that I'm I lack volitional control. I walk huh. the hallway every day and I don't kill nobody. <laughs> they train me to kill. I can kill you with a pencil. You know, I can kill you with a string. I don't do it. I, I don't volitional control. I don't molest children. I've never raped no one in my life. And you got victims coming forward now and, and, and saying they were told to lie by the DEA. The DEA told them to lie. Mm -hmm. They tried to get me and uh, Ricky Ross, and they couldn't get me or Ricky Ross. We, we moved, and uh, these kids got busted for some shit, had nothing to do with me, unrelated, and uh, it, it got put on me. Do you, hey, do you? I would. Technically, I was not going to go testify at the Senate hearing. So, I had, I was confused. What? Hey, I got a question. Why is Rick Ross? He's out, right? And he's still alive, correct? Yep. He's doing. He did a uh, uh, documentary how, film. How is he walking free right now? And if so, how, what kind of relationship did you two have with each other? Ricky Ross knew me as Zane Leopard. He was in jail with me as Zane when I was in L.A. County Jail, East of South Central. Um, I've been there. Um, we, we, I mean, it was business, all strictly business. I had Zone 4, he had Zone 3, 2, and uh, uh, San Luis Obispo was zone, five, uh, zone 5, and I covered Seal Beach, Huntington Beach, Laguna Beach, and uh, Huntington Harbor. That's where I, and I distributed more cocaine, I, 40, 40 kilos of cocaine a week. Yeah. For wait, this is this through. was for the government, right? Or was this on your own? Yes. <laughs> well, this is uh, uh, this is Daniel Bal uh, 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 Blandon. Uh, he worked for the government, but we didn't know that at the time. Oh. And they were getting all this money and, and, uh, and cocaine for these weapons. These are de you know what a decommissioned weapon is. Uh, explain it. That's where, okay, so I do an operation in Greece. I did an operation in Greece in 81. Um, and the, uh, if I use a weapon and it, it, it's been decommissioned and they find it, they'll know what operation that weapon was used in uh, prior to it being decommissioned. Oh. But they won't know who used it. Same thing with, with uh, any type of satellite phone system stuff like that. A lot of these government uh, uh, electronics and eavesdropping devices, LDK-51 detonators were all uh, uh, decommissioned uh, in 83. So they don't use them no more because they're so dangerous. You plant a, you plant a, a pound of C5 uh, in four different places on, on the hull of a ship, and you let the detonator float to the top. As soon as the sun rises and it hits that, that binder, that, that it magnifies the heat, it detonates 
the uh, explosives under the water. They never see it because it's it's clear. It, it matches the water. But uh, all this stuff would decommission. So if I use something like that today, they'll know that whoever's using it was probably part of operations during that time period. That's how they identify, you know, what's uh, what's being used. So everything that was used by uh, uh, our uh, team was decommissioned weapons. We had sanitized uniforms. No, we had no identities. Uh, we uh, every all our communication equipment was designed by Don Brinkerhoff out of Salt Lake City. He worked for the government, um, uh, and John F. Bates was a commanding officer, Fort Douglas in Salt Lake. And um, um, we had uh, went to different areas. Frankie, me, Frankie went with teams to different military outposts on, on an operation called Operation Home uh, Home Port, uh, our home front, uh, and uh, did tested security for military. We broke into the Savannah River, the, uh, Savannah River plant. We broke into. Uh, 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 Fort Knox, we broke, you know, you just test their security. They say that they need a team to find out whether or not it's, you know, escape. The same thing they did with me in prison. Yeah, go get a hydrant. We're going to find out these cuffs are hydrant proof. Pelican Bay. Huh. So, that's the shit they do. Huh? This is... And once they're done with you, Wash your hands with you, I guess. I don't know. I don't pose a risk of danger to nobody, but I am certainly uh, caught up in this shit. <laughs> yes, you uh, are. Tatum tells it all. I mean, I, yeah, Tatum knows. I mean, he knows that they, they come after us. That we either try to do yeah, it. It's, it's really intense. Off. Who knows what I'm saying is true or false? You know? you know, it's really intense, James, and I've talked to you about this when we've had our conversations on our own, but it was the dreams of a child to try and be something that got him caught up in the world, the something he didn't want to be involved in. But, when you know, first, when they first approached me with the Brotherhood of the Rose or whatever you want to call it, uh, John, uh, 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 um, 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 a guy in Florida, uh, I can't remember his name. Oh, man. Um, I, I, you know, I thought it was a patriotic thing to do. I'm an American. I love my country. I still love my country. I don't, I understand that I pose a risk regarding what I know, but I don't pose a risk to anybody because I have no, uh, I like to be by myself. I don't want to be around a lot of people, but I, I, I just wanted to be patriotic. I wanted to serve my country. Uh, I, my first enlistment was at Fort Gordon in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Um, and uh, I went in uh, because of my special skills. Uh, I was immediately referred to special teams rather than uh, military, uh, Army. That's how it all started. And then uh, I didn't like it. I got out of it. Travel to the United States uh, and met people that I shouldn't have met. And uh, when I went to jail on the robbery, kidnapping, uh, that's when I met Michael Rupert. He recruited me. And uh, I've had a hell of a life. It was scary, uh, fun, exciting, and uh, troublesome. But I was told I was doing the right thing for my country. It was uh, democratic, and uh, I believe everything you said. And I haven't. I, I don't hurt people. I don't. I know what it's like to be hurt. I've been hurt all my life, and uh, all I wanted to do is to prove to people I'm not retarded. They put me in a mental institution when I was 10 years old because it was the lesser of the two evils. And I don't know how you explain that, but I never learn how to socialize. I never learn how to uh, uh, deal with stress. I deal with stress differently than other people. I tear things up. I don't hurt people because I know what it's like to be hurt, but I'll tear your doors down, kick them down, tear them up, bend your, break your leg irons. Uh, don't put me in leg irons and taunt me because I'll kick your ass. And I can do that. Um, so I just 
they give me all this stuff and I don't know what to do with it. The waste. They spent a lot of money on me. On, on all of us. Frank Dukes, uh, Tatum. A lot of money. Oof. And then just left, left the, the tent for a sale. James, I um, I'm gonna wrap this. James, I'm gonna wrap this up and wind this down because I know that you're gonna be talking to Paul on Friday, and I don't want to spoil all the the juice for his show. But I I want to give you the opportunity. I think I did this when we spoke on camera the first time, but I I would like for you to share a message that you feel led to share with the world because I have a feeling that more of the world is going to hear this one than the last one. So please share whatever's yeah. on your heart to share. Here's my message. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Even though I'm locked up, I see the news. I see blind hatred spreading everywhere. I see similarities to the Hitler's youth and things that took place during the Nazi occupation of Poland and other places. Uh, history is about to repeat itself. The United States is about to have a rude awakening and everyone needs to be prepared. It's coming soon. Uh, regarding me, there's nothing wrong with me. I've experienced the life of 10,000 men. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it. I was ashamed of being who I was. I made a story up about it to cover the shame, but people eventually taught me and I learned that uh, the truth is more powerful than the lie. Amen. I just say, just give me the benefit of the doubt. Hear me out. Listen to the people who say they were told to lie that I sexually assaulted them. Listen to them. Listen to how many hours it took them to get them to say what they wanted to say. That's true. And this is happening everywhere today. If you are targeted by the judicial system, mm -hmm. you're going to lie to them. Mm -hmm. I'm in Kalinga State Hospital, Kalinga, California, and there's nothing wrong with me at all. I'm being locked up for a crime I might commit in the future. That's it. James, I love you, man. And uh, I'll be in touch. Too, You're going to talk to Paul on Friday with Frank Dukes. Love you both back, bro. What? Sounds good. All right, man. I love you both back. <laughs> I love you too, man. I'll talk Bye. to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Later. All right, we're going to take a quick break and I'll be well, hold on. Am I? Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> and we're back. Um, okay. I, I want to be quick with this last segment um, because I just, I've, I, I, I need to go, but I, I believe him more after that conversation than I believed him before. And I was willing to put my whole life on the line to make a movie about him um, because I believed him, but I have a whole different level of believing him now. Yeah. What are your thoughts, man, about what happened? Oh, no. I am. Every time I talk to him, I'm telling you, every time I talk to him, I am more and more aware that he's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. How did, how, how, how? There's too much that he says that when, and I'm look, literally doing the research as he's saying it, and it's like right there in front of you. It's like, come on. And he doesn't have access to the internet, right? He can't. I mean, he does, but that's, I mean, that's neither here nor there, really. Well, he's lucky because some of the the other civil commitment guys don't have their own phones and right. Yeah. Why? Why do you think they haven't killed him yet? Because nobody knows who he is. They don't remember him. Nobody cares. He's a nobody. 
They tried to kill him a bunch of times. He's even said it. You know what I mean? Well, that place sounds worse than death, the place he's at. When I interviewed him, there was a yeah. fight. <laughs> a fight broke out when I was on with him. And he'd be like, yeah, a fight. I mean, it's just like, it, there's so much violence. That water thing that he's talking about with them poisoning him, that makes sense too. This is, man, um, it's a lot. And look, and there's there's more people that don't believe him, obviously, than do. And I, I think that you can count the people that believe him on a hand, maybe two hands. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're two of them. Um, mm -hmm. but this story, so I, we need a map and we need this ability when we make this movie about him to be able to visually paint the picture and connect the dots for people, because not everyone's brain is capable of going, well, that goes to that and 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 that goes, and then in, in, in seeing how this all connects to current events is even crazier but it does like mm -hmm. we have to paint this picture for people so they they can see they can see the whole thing right because otherwise they won't understand what we're what we're showing them yeah it's so much dude it is layers to it and i'm willing to look it's not like i'm famous or anything right now but i levels are, right? I, i'm it's willing right. to like I didn't, I didn't get into media. I didn't get into broadcasting and all of that to try to be the next Howard Stern. I mean, I'm, I do love shock jocks, and I'm not trying to do this for fame. I'm doing this because I have a mission, and it's right. it's to be not just be a voice for the voiceless, but to elevate other voices of the voiceless, and to share these kind of stories because this truth matters. And again, it's easy to go, well, he's a liar. Well, who didn't lie? And if you've been sexually abused or physically abused, I Bro. know that you're effed up. I know yes. that you're screwed up. I know yeah. that you have problems and you exactly. did things to try to protect your victims. I know that you lied to protect people. You you were ashamed and you kept the secrets. So let's not judge someone else for maybe their lie that made them famous. But there's so much to this story. And I promise you, whether you see it or not, it impacts everyone. It has an effect on everyone and everyone is at risk. Like civil commitment is one issue. James's story is part of civil commitment, but it's part of a much bigger global problem. A yep. web perception, a web of lies, and they're not his lies. This story matters, man. And I don't know. I'm not I don't I'm not smart enough to be able to put every single piece together by myself and I'm really grateful for you um you were pop, popping stuff up on the screen as we were talking basically verifying that James is telling the truth. Telling the truth. 100. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I cuz I am in the same headspace as you are, you know, like I can only believe a little blah 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 and I'm like I don't know, I don't know. But it's real. It's as real as it gets. It's as real as it gets. And the story, story has never changed ever with me. You were right about that because I, it's not like he's repeating the same story every time either because there's 500 stories and we literally, both of us, Paul and yeah. I, talk to James a lot. So we hear some of the stories again, but we hear them in different ways and it's still the same story. It's just that he'll open up more about one side of things. It's just, there's something here. And listen, if you guys are praying people, pray that justice is done. Pray that yep. truth is revealed because truth yep. is going to be healing for all of us. I mean, we all need the truth to heal. But there's yep. so many innocent people that are locked up for various things that just don't, that are wrong. And this is one of them. This is why we care about it. This is why we talk about it. This is why there's so many videos about it for me. And now there's about to be some from Paul that this matters this story matters yeah it really does like uh it's it's these are the these are the stories that you hear about later on in life like like 30 40 50 years later and then you hear the story and you're like how did i not know about this yeah we're telling you hi we're here to tell you about it you know like here we are you know like and and the thing is is that many times 
we end up being the ones that others are angry at because we were the ones who were making you aware of what was going on in the world as if we're the bad guys like you know shoot them don't shoot the messenger um, I did, I hate injustice that's really what it is I hate yeah. injustice yeah 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 no it's it's uh it's heavy, bro. It's heavy, man. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. Well, I'm glad it worked out uh, that he was able to call in because that wasn't expected. This wasn't planned. We don't plan these conversations. But, brother, I, I want you to um, – I'm going to wrap this up, but I want you to, like, plug whatever – plug your podcast, say whatever last words you want, and – Oh, man. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Guys, thank you very much for, uh, well, I should say thank you to youth, but thank you to everybody else who was watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, find me on the internet at Mentally HYP. That's pretty much every single social media that there is out there. It's Mentally Hip uh, because I believe we all mentally hypnotize ourselves to believe one thing or another it creates our perception. So just believe you are mentally hip because I already do. And that's my uh, little key phrase thingy there um, with my jingly dog underneath me. <laughs> Mine's sleeping down here. <laughs> uh, but that's it. My uh, my podcast is on all social medias. Uh, you can find it on my YouTube channel at forward slash Paul David Carpenter, or you can find me on uh, Facebook at Mentally Hip. Uh, I'm also on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, all of them. And the show is being broadcast to uh, eight different platforms every day. So please come watch an episode. We'd love to have you. And would even like to have you as a guest. And that's me. Me? No, oh. I said that's me. Okay. Well, yeah. dude, I, uh, I love you, buddy. And uh, keep up the yeah. amazing work. I can't wait to hear what you do with uh, James and Frank Dukes. But yeah, uh, have fun, man. And I uh, can't wait to hear it. And I'll talk to you soon. 100%. Thank you so much again, Joshua, man. Love you with all my heart. <laughs> Love you too, buddy. See you, man. See you later. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>